Hey everyone, as you know, I'm Super Jimmy, and today I'm doing something a little different. I'm gonna be doing a game review. The game that I'm reviewing today, Paranormal Activity The Lost Soul. I just finished playing the game for the second time. I wanna get some reviews out so that way you guys can pick and choose what games you'd like to play for this Halloween season. Get that spoopy in, you know what I mean? Paranormal Activity The Lost Soul came out August 15, 2017, and was produced and developed by VR Works. From what I understand, they're a pretty small development company. You know, they put out some pretty good stuff for everything from interactive TV, games, movies, to 360 degree video. These guys do it all when it comes to VR. And what my research showed me is that it got a 6.5 Metacritic score, as you can see up here, and it got mostly positive reviews on Steam. So here's some pros of the game. Pro number one, it can be played on VR or PC or console. As far as I can tell, it's available on PS4 and PC. So you can play it either VR or console, keyboard, mouse, or controller, or the VR controls, whatever you prefer, really. How hard are the controls to learn? Keyboard and mouse, controller, VR, are. Well, good news for you, all of them are easy because they give you a little schematic every time you pause. Now you gotta be asking yourself, Jimmy, you know, I, I, I like to play scary games with a little bit of a story. It, you know, paranormal activity, that's all it is, it's just jump scares. Well, you got good news. It's not, this game is not just jump scares. It also has a little bit of a backstory to it too, which you gotta find out as you progress through the game. So you gotta be thinking to yourself at this point, and these sound like some really good pros, but is it scary out of VR? The answer to that question is yes. Yes it is, honestly, because I played it in both VR and on my PC, and I can confirm that both versions were equally as scary. And the good news continues with this next part. As far as another pro of this game is, is that it stays true to the franchise even though it's its own standalone version of it, so therefore you know you can just sit there and play a standalone story as it goes alongside the Paranormal Activity universe, I guess you could say. Now, another pro for the game that I actually honestly like is the fact that there's more than one ending to this video game. That's right, VR Works gave us two whole different endings depending on what items you can collect in the video game. On top of that, you can choose which one you want to do. It's just that simple. So with this game, there are jump scares. I do have to give out that warning, but along with those jump scares and in between the cutscenes and all the scary parts, there's always this constant sense of dread that if you make a wrong turn, you might run into something that you're not ready to run into. And if you're an Oculus Quest owner or just an Oculus owner, it's $20 on Oculus. So I consider that a pro just for price point. Anything below $30 for a game like this, I'm willing to pay out of pocket. At this point in the video, if you've made it this far, I'd like you to drop a like, a comment, and a subscribe, and hit that little bell so that way you can get notified every time I go live, because this is going to be a new constant on this channel. I'd like to get more reviews out there along with some gameplay of the games that I'm going to be reviewing, so stay tuned for that. At this point in the video, I'd like to get into the cons of the game, because you know, no game is absolutely 110% perfect, and there's always going to be some bad with some of the good when you play a video game like this. Now, along with all the good that I gave out for the pros, I kind of went through those ones pretty quick, but the cons, I'd like to break those down just a little bit more. For the first con, I'd like to bring up would have to be the fact that there's no guidance system to help you find your way around in this game. While you're locked in a big house with many rooms to explore, the simple fact of the matter is that you could be walking past the same item multiple times or walking around in circles not knowing what the next step is unless you have the book that's with you. The book is your main source of guidance. It gives you an outline of all the items that you have to collect for both endings in order to get to the ending that you want to get. And I just find that kind of a hindrance. It might not be that bad of a con for some of you. This one's kind of a selective one, but at the same time it was just something that I wish I would have had in the game just like a little bit more guidance towards what I needed to grab instead of walking down the same hallway five times. For this next part it's gonna be a little bit nitpicky and it's not a big one at all and that is if you spend too long in a certain area it's just instant death. There's no getting away from it. You can try and run and hide it's just gonna chase you down. There's not really a sprint system in the game I guess you can say which to me in a game like this that would kind of be the option that you would need to have is that way you could get away from what it was that was trying to chase you or pursue you or whatever the case is. This next one is kind of a personal preference with me. I I like longer games. This game seemed a little bit too short to me. It just kind of seemed that you could go through on your first playthrough and beat it in probably about four hours, give or take. On your second playthrough, you can probably get through it in less than two, and so on and so forth until you're basically speedrunning the game because you know where everything's at. There's no changes on the placement of items and where they're located. For me, I wish that there was some intermittence in the game so that way you could have a little bit more playtime and spend a little bit more time exploring the story in the game. For this next con, it kind of turns into the first one where I said that there was wasn't any guidance. There's also not really any way to like locate the items that you're looking for. You could walk past the same item multiple times and just not know that it's there and you're looking for it and you could spend hours in that one area knowing that you've looked everywhere else in the house and it's simply been staring at you the whole time. For this next con, I'm going to pick on the voice acting. To me, it seemed a little hit or miss in some areas. The little girl, she seemed to be your stereotypical little girl and she played her part, but for the mom in the game, she was just kind of lackluster. There was no change in the tone of her 
her voice. It was just anger. And for me to be in a scary game, I want something a little bit more than just anger being portrayed at me in that sense, because even in the Paranormal Activity movies, they had a little bit more dialogue and a little bit more emphasis on certain words. For me, she just spoke in a very monotone fashion. This next con, for me, I found that the gameplay itself was a little bit repetitive, which I know in some scary games, it's going to be a little bit of repetition in there, which led to it to where you didn't want to go back into the game and replay it again to try and get the other ending because you feel like you've already accomplished the true ending by finishing the first one. I wish they would have just added a little bit more into the endings of the game to make it to where it was a little bit more available. That one's part of my opinion, but in all honesty, I just didn't really mind the second playthrough. It was still just as scary to me as the first one, but with that being said and that being out of the way, to me it just took away all the replayability. I tried to get the second ending on the, the second playthrough, but I messed up and I missed the item that I needed. That was my fault, not the game developer's fault. That was on me. Rolling into the next one right after I say that there's no replayability of the game. This one can either be a good or a bad, depending on you. The story has no real build-up. It just drops you right in the middle of the action, which makes it to where you're just going from 0 to 100 almost instantly, and therefore making it just a little bit more horror-esque, and I get that, but for me, there wasn't really a build-up to being like, I'm in danger now. It was just, okay, let me find my way around the house. Now I'm in danger. It was just no pause in between or no build-up, no ramp-up to that, that sense of dread. It was just instant dread, which, you know, could be a good or bad. For me, it was nice having the story just be itself and be true to the paranormal activity nature, which is good for me, but for some, I could see where that would be a con. Now, I know I talked price point on the other one as far as the Oculus goes. I've seen it go for about $15 to $20 on PS4 as well, but on Steam, it's still $30. So if you're a PC player and that's the only sense of gaming that you have, be aware of that. Just look for it when it's on sale. Try and get it below that $30 mark. At most, I would pay for this game when it's not on sale. It's probably about $25. And $30 just doesn't seem reasonable for this game at this point in time. For my last and final con, this one's not going to be subjective. I noticed that there wasn't really an option for subtitles in the game, and that would kind of make it a little bit easier for the hearing impaired to play. That's something I like to do because I have hearing damage, so I like to listen to as much of the game as I can, but I also like to have the subtitles available so that way I can know if I missed a certain word or if I missed a, a pivotal point of the story. I know there's some people out there that can't hear or have a hard of hearing issue and they need subtitles in their games in order to be able to enjoy them. And I'd like to see it, you know, to where we have some subtitles for them to be able to be included in the game. Now for these last two, I couldn't tell if they were pros or cons. So you tell me what you think. For the first one, I couldn't tell if it was good or bad because of the simple fact that this game is very jump scare reliant. So when you're in between cutscenes or you're in the hallway just too long or you turn a corner too quickly or you get to a cutscene, there's always going to be a jump scare involved at anywhere you go in the game. Again, I couldn't tell if that was a good or a bad thing, so I'll leave that one up to you. For this next one, I really couldn't tell if it was a pro or a con just because of the simple fact that there is a lot of dead airspace in between cutscenes and jump scares and anything like that. There's no real there's no real music. There's not really a track to the game. This one was just something I couldn't tell if it was a good or a bad thing, so you can kind of, you know, listen out for certain audio cues and stuff like that in the game to tell if you're going to be in danger or not. For me, having no music in the background kind of made it to where there was a lot more dread and a little bit more suspense buildup in between jump scares to where you just weren't just so in tune to the music around you. You were missing certain things such as the TV cutting on by itself or a certain snarl behind you or anything like that. You could listen out for that type of stuff. And I really enjoyed that because you could really hear when something was about to change. For my overall thoughts of the game, I honestly really enjoyed this game. I thought it was a good game. For anybody else out there, I would recommend you to check this game out to form your own opinion. This is just mine. All in all, I gave the game a 6.5 out of 10. It was enjoyable the first and second time that I played through. So yeah, that's Paranormal Activity, Lost Soul, and my thoughts on the game. If you want to go out and set the tone for this Halloween season and check this game out, I'd recommend it. You can always go check out this game on one of its variable platforms. As always, everyone, I'm Super Jimmy. Hope to see you guys in the next video. If you haven't already, hit that like button, drop a subscribe, drop me a comment, and click that little bell icon so that way you can get notified every time I upload. And as always, much love out there and peace.